today you didn't do what you were supposed to do with the dishes and it makes me mad what are we supposed to do in the future when we have a baby what are you just gonna leave the dishes there it just that's it i'm so done every night for the past couple of nights you've been bringing up stuff that's negative before bed and i cannot sleep i cannot freaking sleep i can't have good dreams and i don't wake up rested and i don't wake up ready to do the next day and then it just happens again and again and again marriage and any given relationship will always have conflict in fact marriage will always fluctuate in and out of conflicts naturally over time because each partner in their marriage is growing at a different pace the other partner is going to have to learn how to adjust and grow with them. Sometimes each partner is growing together at the same rate. And oftentimes they are growing at completely different rates. Usually when each partner is growing at a different pace or different rate is when a conflict arises. So you will find that each partner in any given marriage is either growing with or without each other. And it is usually best to continuously work to grow together with each other. Today we are sharing five conflicts that we have resolved. Did we? <laughs> kind of. You'd be surprised these conflicts still come up once in a while, so they still creep up. But here is the takeaway as we go through each experience of ours. When one person cares more, or has a higher desire, that is the person that has to take the lead on that activity or effort. Right, and when somebody has a low desire for an activity or an effort, they have to learn how to adjust and to adapt to the wishes, expectations, and demand of the higher desiring person. But usually what this means is each person has to compromise. That is, the high desiring person is the one who has to figure out a way to be less invasive with their vision, and the low desiring person is the one who has to make more effort to meet the high desiring person vision of reality. Conflict number one. Negative discussions before bed. Who is the one who had the biggest issue with this? Me. Over time, we, I realized we both needed to communicate negative things earlier in the day. Uh, but it basically got to a point of immense frustration for me because I couldn't sleep at night. I was running all these scenarios in my head about like all these little things that I potentially needed to change it for myself or the way we did things. And Whitney would wait until like the last minute, like we we're about to turn off the light and say, hey, I need to tell you about this thing. And it was just like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to sleep at night? Well, it took me a long time to understand that you needed to speak about this earlier in the day. And it also took me a while to process what I needed to say to you and that's why I would wait all day long until I was more comfortable at night until I felt like you were paying attention to me because you were always busy too. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was very busy but definitely an hour before bed is not the time to get my attention. That's, that's the time to zone out and like start to try not to think. <laughs> I learned that. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, the, the most basic thing we did was, you know, encouraging Whitney, like, hey, just bring up the conflict. I'll be receptive in the moment. You know, try to bring it up in the moment if you can, if not like an hour later instead of like, you know, the entire day later. Yeah. Um, but we, we got through it. So here's a little clip of us uh, reenacting our conflict. <laughs> Mira, I don't want you to be mad, but you really need to start putting face cream. Like you are really getting ugly and like I see the wrinkles. You need to wash your face, put the face cream right after. I need you to clean the counter every time you make coffee. Told you I didn't want to get the backpacks, the big backpacks because we're just not going to do the big hikes. I'm not ready for that. That's it. I'm so done every night. For the past couple of nights, you've been bringing up stuff that's negative before bed, and I cannot sleep. I cannot freaking sleep. I can't have good dreams, and I don't wake up rested, and I don't wake up ready to do the next day, and then it just happens again and again and again. We've got to start fixing these little issues 
earlier in the day when they arise and not right before bed because I just don't have the capacity and energy to deal with it. Conflict number two. Asking for things in a kind and nice way. And who was the one struggling with this? I'd have to say both to an extent. But mostly me. Hey, give me water, please. As a Latina woman, you know, I learned to not think through what I was going to say to my partner and kind of just react and bring it out just the way it came out. And a lot of times it wasn't very nice. Yeah. And when you would often ask for something and she would be like, can you please do this? Can you do this, please? I still and, said, play, please. And, and I'm always like, I, I value tone over the word please. I'm like, I don't care how many times you use please. You need to say it with a nice tone. Could you do this? I would prefer that. Hey, could you do this? Versus, could you do this, please? <laughs> I've learned. And now I, I think I've improved in that area quite a lot. Um, I don't say please as much, but I have improved my tone over time. Yes, and it helps. And I mean, it made me reactive, right? And so I, I have learned to not be so reactive and say, hey, like we need to work on tone here because you're kind of making me react. And I don't like to react at you. Um, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want to react at you unless it's a kiss. <laughs> Conflict number three. Cooking in the kitchen and how we plan to cook. Who is the one with this issue? Uh, it was kind of both. So I'm really messy in the kitchen. Like when I decide to cook something, I kind of put everything out on the counter because I don't want to forget uh, something. Um, but when he's very like formulaic and really neat and really clean the entire time. I open the cabinet, take the salt, use it, put it away. I open the cabinet, take the tongs, use it, put it away. I open every single cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> but at the, end, at the end of cooking, I clean up the whole kitchen so that it is pristine and clean. But at the beginning of this relationship, I didn't know that Johnny was going to clean his mess. I thought I was going to be the one that had to clean all of these and it just made me upset mm -hmm. and mad. And then it made me upset and mad because I tried to like do the operation of helping out in the kitchen her way and I would forget a specific ingredient in the recipe and then it wouldn't taste right. <laughs> and, and we had to literally sit down and say, all right, so if I'm the help out in the kitchen, you know I'm going to like put everything I need in one place so I don't forget a specific, a specific thing. Unless I've done that recipe like at least five times, but we were doing a lot of new recipes and mm -hmm. it was really confusing for me and I was already really busy with like more than one job because I've always had more than one job. And, you know, I, I was like, I just need to put everything right here and then execute and then I'll clean up afterward. And I had to understand that this is the way Johnny's brain works. And I had to trust that he was going to be the one that cleans after. And he always did. So it was easy to let go of wanting to be controlling in the kitchen and trust in Johnny because he always delivered as well. Yeah, and over time what we've decided to do, especially with dinner or when we're cooking together in the kitchen is we just kind of like separate our task <laughs> and we don't see each other, like we don't c collide with each other in the kitchen, it's kind of funny. Um, so, so nowadays what you normally do is you work on the salad mm -hmm. and I normally work on anything that has to do with the stove so if we're cooking meat or we're cooking anything in the stuff, that is my job. Yeah, and I prep and I, I clean like dishes immediately. I actually like dishes to be cleaned immediately. Um, that is a big pet peeve of mine. Winnie doesn't always care about that. So there, there are little small things in the kitchen um, that did turn into actual conflicts and we were kind of like attacking each other. Um, but we've worked through those over time. Conflict number four. Work opportunities. Hey, Vita, how's it going? Hey, I'm Netflix and chilling. Have you applied for any jobs today? No. How many shows have you watched? Oh, I watched five seasons of Friends. Learn a lot of English. I guess we're just gonna be broke for life. 
And who was the one struggling with this? It was both, but... In very opposite ways. Very opposite ways. For me, I've always been like, I'm going to go after the next opportunity. I'm going to go work more than one job. And I'm just going to go and like apply and um, just... I, I think that comes from the American culture. Whitney, on the other hand... I was very afraid to apply for jobs other than being a nanny <laughs> because I was very insecure with my English, with my communication skills. I knew how to deal with kids and they were very understanding of my English. They always tried to correct me and I knew how to have fun with little kids. But I was very afraid to go into the corporate world. and. I didn't know how people were going to react to my English, to my communication skills. I was just afraid to really apply for jobs because of that. Yeah, and so I had to really like push Whitney and some days I pushed a little too hard and then the whole day would turn into silence. And But eventually, eventually we got over this and Whitney did apply and then she doubled her income and I'm like, hey look, we got all this money to do all these fun things and save a lot more. Um, so it just became easier over time. Um, and I've become less uh, focused on work, which sounds kind of funny to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and a little bit more loose with my time and how I think about time and not just dedicating all my, my effort and energy to work. And I, I think a lot of Americans struggle with that specifically is, is you know, I thinking about the side hustle culture, you know, yeah. I recently said, I'm like, side hustle is like the new slavery because people are just <laughs> constantly working. Like, why Why do you need to constantly work? It just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you gotta stop and slow down and enjoy life. And Whitney kind of showed me that. Um, and I showed her how to be a little bit more productive. So we kind of- <laughs> We, we complimented, middle. yes. Yeah. Yes, Johnny really had to learn to take the time to relax and to retard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he was always working 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 and um thankfully i got a, a job that i really liked with people that i really liked and i gained a lot of confidence in myself and with my english skills and i just kind of like went for it uh, within two years i went through like three different promotions and um i, I really my confidence boost up this one still happens today. So conflict number five. Personality differences. Introvert versus extrovert. Definitely on a Friday night. Like <laughs> a Friday night or a weekend, I'm ready to go out, see people, do something. Uh, and on a Friday night, like literally, I, I'd be putting on my collared shirt or something nicer to wear and like getting ready to like see my friends and see and people. Then I'm on the closet putting on my robe, my bonnet, getting ready to chill for the date because it was a long week. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I don't want to Netflix and chill right now. It's been a long week, so I want to go hang out with people. <laughs> it, 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 we just constantly collide and we ha we've had to plan and say like, all right, you know, like if you feel like you need to recharge for a moment, you need to take like an hour or two, um, you know, between the time of Indian work and going out to hang out with some friends. Um, and that's one way I kind of notice you, you kind of recharge. Yes, planning has really helped because I know what to expect for the weekend. I know what to expect for the next weekend and I know when I have the time to relax. Bonus conflict. Is, it, <laughs> is, there, even, is there even such a thing as a bonus conflict? Is it a bonus? I mean, it is because it was supposed to be 10 conflicts and now we added this. Yeah. Which is the reason why it took us so long to make the second part of this video. Yes, so because of the pandemic, we got extremely, extremely bored with our lives and pace of life and living in Dallas, Texas. Richardson. <laughs> Richardson. And we lived in Dallas and then Richardson and then it didn't really feel much different. But it just kind of like made us go, we need, the, we need to do something more radical. We need to do something that's just adventurous to break this way of feeling. I don't know, just this blah, this blah that we are experiencing. Something that would feed our hearts and our souls and our adventurous spirit. So as a result, 
to solve this conflict, we decided, hey, we're just gonna go move to another country and we're gonna try some YouTube stuff for a while uh, just to see how we feel about it and, um, you know, just kind of go, go all in. It's, so far it's extremely challenging between the technical setup and the devices. And finding the time. Finding the time. Planning. Writing the scripts. Yes, it's a lot, but it's something different and we both like to try different things, obviously. And, and on top of that, Colombia was a top choice. You can watch our, you know, we just moved to the Colombia uh, video, but you know, we're right by the mountains and I, I'm just loving being in the mountains. I've actually always loved mountains and I've never lived near them. I've only gone and visited them for a moment. So the fact that every single week we're going on a hike is like a peak experience for me. Um, and as, as I tell Johnny, everywhere you look around in the city, you see the mountains, they are there in the background. <laughs> Yeah, basically we were really bored with our lives. I think I had almost like a depression phase through some months and it was just really difficult for even our relationship. We were not doing things together. We mm -hmm. were kind of like having more conflicts for things that had not come up before, but it was because both of us were really bored with the place we were at. Yeah, and it was it was also hard for me to watch like my wife kind of like go into these depression modes, um, and I had to bring it up to Winnie and be like, "Hey, like I think you're experiencing a borderline type of depression," and it's like we, you know, like there there are two ways to solve that, right? It'll change your thinking about your situation, and and also to literally change your your situation. So we kind of did both. Um, change, change our thinking, you know, you still got to participate in things that you really enjoy doing even if you're not exactly where you want to be, um, but at the same time we made efforts to be somewhere different, liter literally different, uh, Bogota, Colombia at the moment. Yeah, and it was honestly hard to hear that from you because I didn't see it as that. I was just, you know, not feeling well. I was thinking that maybe it was just a phase that I just didn't wanted to do much but hearing your perspective really like made me wake up and think there is something that I need to change about our situation or myself or something needed to change mm -hmm. and we did we did it we're here now yes for the moment <laughs> okay. So to conclude this video today, we started off saying that there is a high desiring person when there, a conflict arises and a low desiring person when a conflict arises. Um, and the person who is the high desiring one has to kind of like humble themselves and kind of figure out a way to like take charge of that thing that they want to experience and communicate it to the person who is low desiring so that the low desiring has reasonable expectations on how to adapt and change so that they can actually, um, you know, meet the vision that that is there. But that that's kind of what's so interesting about this is that it's so uneven the way these conflicts are, happen because people are just growing at different paces constantly. And marriages, if they don't take time to recognize those differences in growth, it, you're never going to see a way through the conflict. Uh, what I would add is that the high desire person, it really has to find ways to communicate what that person wants and how he wants to lead that activity and also find kind ways to communicate uh, for the low desire person to be more receptive. And that is something that we, we both work on at different um, points in our marriage uh, with different conflicts. Mm -hmm. And I think we both have learned from each other to either be more kind, be more reflective of a situation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not reactive, which is a very big one for me. <laughs> yeah. And it happens to me too, specifically, it's really the high desiring person who gets reactive. Like more recently, like I love riding my bicycle, which I don't have anymore, but um, when I ride my bicycle, I like to do like 20 to 30 miles. And Whitney's like, I like to do 10, maybe 15. 
And so, you know, when we would ride together, it was fun and enjoyable, but we weren't going as fast as I wanted to go. We weren't going as long as I wanted to go. And the same thing is occurring with like hiking. Like I just want to go a little faster and a little longer. Um, so we kind of have to come into these like compromises that meet each other's needs. Cause it's not that she doesn't want to ride her bike or that she doesn't want to hike. It's that she just doesn't want to do it to the same level of intensity. Um, so I have shorter legs. Yeah. She's shorter. I don't know. Hell, <laughs> but when he is much shorter than me, you take one step, I take three. So <laughs> I am putting more it's probably effort like into probably the one, same distance. One and a half or 1.3 or something steps. Yeah, it is funny. But that's it. Conflicts. Maybe we'll do another one. I think we would do another one because traveling is bringing up to all sorts of crap. Yes. <laughs> and we will definitely talk about those and how we're going through those conflicts while in different cities with different scenarios with family involved for now go watch our colombia video we'll see you next week yeah i can get you some water please <laughs>